So now let's look at another case scenario. There is a 42 year old male patient who is presenting with low grade fever and pus cells. That is there is pyuria. Urine culture shows no growth. It means urine culture is sterile. And he is also complaining of weight loss of 10 kgs in 3 months. Again quite alarming signs. Ultrasound shows hydronephrosis in kidney. Physician advises another investigation which is attached. Now the examiner wants to know how will we proceed in this particular case. So let us try to look at this particular case very carefully because it is one of the commonest questions that are going to be asked to you from this section of gastrointestinal infections. What it is? It is nothing but genitourinary tuberculosis, GUTB. Now when we will be describing GUTB, I will tell you one thing that GUTB is going to involve almost all parts of the KUB region. So we would be having a discussion in a conceptual manner. When we will be starting, the infection has started from one part of the KUB region and it is now extending towards the other part. First important thing that I would like to ask you is how does a GUTB occur? How, does it, how will it start? Can, it, can you get it by coughing on somebody? No, you can't get it because kidneys are placed posteriorly. Even if you cough so hard, it won't reach your kidneys. So droplet spread is not possible in case of GU tuberculosis. So what is the next way in which it can spread? The spread has to be through a hematogenous route. Now we have very clear that it could spread only by a hematogenous route. So where do you think it will reach first? Where the bacteria will lodge first? It will reach where in, in that area where the blood supply is maximum. So in the, kid, in the region of kidneys, ureter, bladder, where do you think the blood supply is maximum? It is nothing but in the kidneys. And if I ask you whether where in the kidneys, basically it is basically the renal medulla because there the cells are actively functioning. So they need continuous supply of oxygen. So there will be maximum blood supply in that particular area. So if the bacteria has to lodge, it will go over the region of the medulla. And how does renal anatomy look like? The, re the medullary pyramids, the tip of the medullary pyramids are in close location or abutment with what? The calicial system. So now what we can infer from this particular discussion is that the infection would start perhaps from the medulla and then it will go downstream into the calicial system and then it will involve the other parts of the KUB region as well. So let's try to decipher how will this infection occur and what will it be in, uh, what, how will it present on the various radiographic and IVP images. So now let's understand how does genitourinary tuberculosis start and how does it proceed. We've already discussed that through hematogenous route, the bacteria would be lodged where? The bacteria would be lodged near the medullary pyramid. So see what these, these red colors represent. These red color dots represent the bacteria which have now passed their way into the region of the medulla. What are they doing? They're very happy. They're safe in their home. They're cozy. But at this point of time, do you think you can find any changes on an IVP? No, because IVP looks at only the calyces. IVP looks at the uh, calicial system, pelvis and the ureter. It's an investigation which uses contrast and contrast is blind. So it cannot look at the renal parenchyma. So at this particular stage, the IVP is going to be normal. Okay. Now, what are these bacteria going to do? They're eating and making and doing and parting around. And what is the next work they're doing? They're, they will proliferate. And the work of a bacteria is to divide, divide and further increase the infection. So what they will do? They will increase the infection. Once the infection is increased, you can see these are nothing but the medullary pyramids. And this is the tip of the medullary pyramid, which is seen in direct communication with what? The calicial system. So once they keep on dividing, 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 what they will do? They will reach up to the medullary pyramids and the tip of the medullary pyramids. And finally, they will go into the calicial system. As you can see, this red color represents their extension into the calicial system. So at this particular stage, how would calyx appear? Would it appear normal? No. It would appear as if somebody has eaten these calyces up or to be very uh, specific, this type of a sign is called as a moth-eaten appearance. So this moth-eaten appearance is nothing but the first sign of genitourinary tuberculosis. Can we pick this up on ultrasound? Definitely not. Can we pick it up on CT? Perhaps may or perhaps may not, but we can definitely pick it up on IVP because it is a calicial pathology. Had it been a parenchymal pathology, CT would have taken it better. So for this early changes of uh, genitourinary tuberculosis, IVP is still the investigation of choice. Now let us suppose what happens. The bacteria are still not happy. They want to divide. They want to go to new places. So what they will do? They will go and grow along the walls of the calicial system. Now you can see this black color represents the growth which is occurring along the calicial system. Now what, 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 does, what happens in tuberculosis? We've already discussed that tuberculosis is a disease which causes lot of fibrosis. Now what will happen? These bacteria have done their damage. Body will come into charge. Body will say that I have to, 
I have to guard this infection in some way. What will body do? Body will try, try to have some form of a fibrotic reaction in this area. So what will fibrotic reaction in this area cause? It will cause narrowing of the infundibulum or narrowing of the pelvis, narrowing of the calicial outline. What is an infundibulum? Infundibulum is basically the opening of the calyx into the pelvis. So that particular area will be narrowed down. So once it is narrowed, because there is fibrosis, so what will happen about the contrast which was present here? This contrast should pull up because it is unable to go downstream. So this appearance will lead to hydronephrosis. And this will be an asymmetric hydronephrosis. Why? Because there is involvement of preferentially one or two calluses. Because the infection is not going to involve all the calluses simultaneously. It is basically the one calyx which is involved. So this is the calyx will be affected and will be seen on an IVP. So the second thing which happens is hydronephrosis. Now let us suppose the disease keeps on progressing. So there will be multiple areas where asymmetric hydronephrosis will develop. You can see hydronephrosis will develop here, there and in multiple calicial region. Now one time will come and what will happen? This infection is going to go extend up to the renal pelvis as it has occurred in this case. What has occurred is you can see that the renal pelvis cannot be outlined. Similarly, you can see here renal pelvis has not been outlined rather it has become so contracted and fibrous that contrast is not even reaching the renal pelvis again it will lead to increasing hydronephrosis once a hydronephrosis further increases the disease will progress further now one more way in which the disease can progress is that all these bacteria are going to fill up this particular calyx and there will be an extreme fibrotic reaction so much so that this calyx is almost destroyed now, once it gets destroyed, how will it appear on IVP? It won't be even seen on IVP. You can see the other calluses well seen. So, this is also called by the name of phantom calyx sign or amputated calyx. So, these are all the signs which we expect to occur in the phase in which the renal tuberculosis is advancing predominantly in the calicial system. And these changes are going to be best picked up on IVP. So what have we talked about? Let's quickly revise. First, the bacteria are going to come into the region of the medullary pyramids. They are going to go and extend into the calyces first. So first thing will be a moth-eaten calyx, number one. Now, once the moth-eaten calyx occurs, then the bacteria, they are, they are hungry organisms, unhappy with whatever they get. So they will go ahead. They will try to extend into the calyces. Once they extend into the calyces, they will extend into the infundibulum. They will cause, body will now come into action. What will do? It will undergo fibrosis and this fibrosis will result in hydronephrosis. Once the disease extends further, it will go into, up to the renal of pelvis. So the renal pelvis will also become fibrotic, narrow and the hydronephrosis will further increase. Sometimes what can happen is one of the calyx may be completely destroyed by the gerontourinary tuberculosis and it, wouldn't, it won't be even shown up on an IVP. So it will result in a phantom calyx or the amputated calyx. So now we have finished about the renal parenchymal or renal calicial changes that can occur in a patient with tuberculosis. Now the disease will go beyond this. Now the disease will go through the pelvis into the ureter. Let us see what are the signs that we can expect in ureteric spread of genital urinary tuberculosis. So this is another classical example of the infection being spread to the ureter. Again, the body will come into play and body has only one thing to do. It will undergo, it will, it will incite a fibrotic response wherever there is a tubercular bacteria involved. So once there is fibrosis in the ureter, this will lead to multiple areas of narrowing. These are nothing but strictures. So what will the poor ureter do? It will become dilated because somewhere it's narrowed. So there will be stasis upstream to it. So the ureter will be dilated. It will still try to push. It will still try its best to push the urine downstream. But because there are so many narrowings, you can see here it is narrowed, here it is narrowed. This, bac this tubercle bacteria has spread along the entire length and, is, and, is, and has destroyed the ureter at multiple places. And body has incited a fibrotic response. Even body is not helping us at this particular time. So there will be significant narrowing and dilatation of the ureter. And you can see, you can yourself see that this type of a ureter is looking like a corkscrew ureter. Number one. Number two, also what we can see is the pelvis. The pelvis is being hiked up. Hiking means some nothing but it is being pulled up. So we can have, because of this fibrotic reaction, a hiked up pelvis or a hiked up ureter. Now coming on to next thing. We can see that this ureter being dilated and once it becomes so dilated, there are so many kinks which are present in the ureter. So this particular kinking of ureter is called as curse kink. So what we have found about till now, 
that because there will be a fibrotic response in the ureteric wall, there will be definite stricturing, dilatation, all sorts of destruction and ureter will become dilated, it will have a corkscrew appearance, there will be hiked up pelvis and ureter and there will be a kink that will be present which is called as a Kirk's kink. Now coming on to the other form. The other form in which ureter can get involved is the entire wall may undergo fibrosis rather than patchy patchy areas of narrowing or patchy patchy areas of stretching as we can see in the previous example. So when the entire wall of the ureter undergoes fibrosis, look how this ureter is appearing. appearing. It is appearing as a pipe stem, completely fibrosed ureter. So if you find a pipe stem ureter again, it is one of the manifestations of the ureteric spread of the genitourinary tuberculosis. So let's quickly revise what will happen. Once the infection spreads onto the ureter, it is going to go extend into its wall. Once it destroys the wall, body will come into play. Body will try to repair the damage that it has done. Now, body, what will it do? It will incite a fibrotic response because the disease has come from superiorly and dropped inferiorly. What it will do? There may be patchy areas of involvement where patchy areas are destroyed by the ureter. So it will result in multiple structures. Multiple structures result in dilatation resulting in corkscrew appearance, the pelvis and the ureter will be hiked up, so there will be hiked up pelvis and hiked up ureter and there will be kinking of the ureter which is called as curse kink. Sometimes the entire ureteric wall may be damaged by the bacteria, unlike this in which there is patching and focal involvement. So the, if the entire wall is damaged, then the body will try to re repair this entire wall and there will be, uh, be fibrosis all throughout the length of the ureter. This will lead to what is called as the pipe stem ureter. One more important thing you need to know is that once they open into the urinary bladder, their openings will also become abnormal and widened and gaping. So this is called as goal fold ureters. Now goal fold ureters are ab abnormal, uh, are represent the abnormal openings of ureters at the ureterovesical junctions in the bladder. Now let us look at how does this CT appear, how does this appearance of IVP look on CT? Again, in the CTIP, you can classically see all the findings. See, there is ureter, uh, there is narrowing of the infundibulum. There is caliceal dilatation here. The moth eaten appearance is not very well looked at up as, as we can see in this particular case. So this is the reason why in early stages, IVP is the investigation of choice. Then we can see that there is fibrosis occurring at the renal pelvis also. The ureter also is showing narrowings in this particular area. So this is a classical example of genitourinary tuberculosis. Now let us suppose that the, now the infection has reached into the bladder. Again, what do the bacteria do? They are never happy. They'll keep eating the bladder from here and there. And now again, the body will come into place. Now bod our body ourselves is not helping us. In fact, it is being, it is doing all the things which are harming us. It will again incite a fibrotic response. What will happen? The entire urinary bladder will have a small volume. Why? Because it has undergone fibrosis on all aspects. So this small volume bladder is called as a thimble bladder thimble bladder. Now these are all the changes which we can expect when a genitourinary tuberculosis is progressing from kidneys, ureter and into the region of urinary bladder. But what will happen when the disease has ended or healed? As I told you when I was discussing uh, pulmonary tuberculosis and infections elsewhere also that the result of all sorts of infections once they healed is nothing but calcium or calcification. So what can we see in this particular case? The entire kidney has calcified and this gives appearance to this reniform, appearance, reniform contour of calcification. This is called as putti kidney. Again, this is extremely, extremely important from the point of view of your exam because this has been asked innumerable number of times. They would give you an image-based question like this where, there one, where one of the kidneys or one of the renal shadow will show dense calcifications like a putti and they will ask you what is the diagnosis. So this is nothing but this represents end-stage uh, renal tuberculosis and it's called putti kidney. One more thing I want you to know that once this kidney has undergone a complete uh, a stage of complete non-function, so what, what, what will body do? Body will cut off the blood supply because this kidney is no more functioning. So the kidney will be eventually become smaller on its own and this phenomenon is called as autonephrectomy. Autonephrectomy.